uh, the statement that it stopped in front of the U.S. Uh, Senate uh, committee, the church committee hearings, CIA gave testimony saying it stopped. That was apparently not true. In fact, um, my bit of research has shown that uh, former deputy director Victor Marchetti uh, claims publicly that this is a cover story. And you can read all about that at wanttoknow.info, uh, which is a really good site with declassified okay. CIA documents. Uh, we also know, um, well, there's been reports of other people who've come forward, such as uh, Kathy O'Brien, um, Kathleen Sullivan. Uh, there's been a handful of published books, um, like I have just done, uh, detailing their experience after the date the CIA said they had stopped MKUltra. They were using torture, trauma-based mind control to make slaves. Uh, and this, the, the, what the CIA's MK Ultra program is, is about is basically picking up from the work of Dr. Yosef, um, I can hardly get this last name, um, Mengele, Nazi, yes, a sadist, who was in the World War II concentration camps doing experiments on typically twin Jewish children. Uh, and he was really pioneering this torture uh, to cause uh, the subject to dissociate, which means that the dominant personality, I mean, if you get tortured enough, anybody tortured enough will eventually dissociate, and which means that it's a self-protection uh, mechanism. And when the dominant personality goes to sleep, what's left over is a very malleable infant, or not infant, but like a childlike uh, presence that's easily hypnotized. And you have very little resistance to, to hypnotism once you've been dissociated. And so once you're, you're, you're able to be hypnotized, then you can be forced to repeat post-hypnotic suggestions, which are suggestions in the first person. Uh, when I hear two, um, you know, toots of, a, of an air horn, I will uh, go and wring this person's neck, for example. And what happens is you repeat that about a dozen times in the first person, and at the very end they make you repeat a suggestion which says, I will not remember this suggestion until the trigger is present. And then you say it again, I will not remember this suggestion until the trigger is present. And you say that over and over again, and then what happens is when you come out of that dissociation period and your, your dominant personality comes back, you have no memory in your conscious mind of the entire dissociative event. You have what's called missing time. That's why I call my book The Murder of Time, Making and Unmasking a Sleeper. back to JFK, uh, you know, so, I mean, there's some, so many of these assassinations where the person is, is targeted up as either a Marxist or uh, lately, of course, Islamicist with the San Bernardino thing, but these people are really patsies, and there's actual professionals that are doing these killings, really uh, daunting the scope of this project. And in fact, here in Canada in the 1950s and 1960s at the uh, Allen Memorial Institute in Montreal, and also the Royal Victoria Hospital in Montreal, there were thousands of Canadians who were experimented upon using mind control techniques by Dr. Ewan Cameron, who was uh, funded by the CIA. And still to this day, uh, psychiatrists are not taught about that involvement, and they don't even know that, 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 this, is, that this happened in Canada. Um, so it's actually, the scope of it is huge, as you point out. And in fact, I was just um, doing a little bit of uh, poking around uh, from on my own web, uh, or actually it's my, my Facebook uh, site, and I, I found that uh, I had earlier posted this, and people want to see this, they can look at uh, the Liberty, uh, it's called the Liberty 
humanexperimentationbeacon.com. If you put in that, that website, uh, human experimentation, you'll find dozens and dozens and dozens of studies that have been published footnoted with real good sources of a human experimentation that's gone on, and some of that, of course, is MKUltra. Most people can't believe that they would actually do these things, and that's why I encourage people to do actual research and or, you know, look at my book and read my book, because this is actually, not only is it historically gone on, and there's, it's all out there in the public domain, you can read about these studies, these things that happened in North America, but it's still happening today. I have made it my mission to tell this story uh, because I believe in democracy and I believe in, in you know, human experimentation is ethically wrong um, and I believe that false flag terror events are ethically wrong. sent to the Allen, which was the psychiatric ward of the uh, Royal Vic. Uh, every time I had the uh, nitrous oxide, I felt like I was spinning into, and I always thought, is this how it feels to die? And I never knew if I'd ever come out of it. It really left me feeling very, very angry and very depressed afterward and I didn't like all the pills that I was get, taking. I couldn't swallow them with water because uh, they were always afraid that I wouldn't keep them down. So a nurse was always watching me until I swallowed them. Uh, once we were at the island, we, we didn't have a choice. Of, we couldn't say, no, we don't want this. No. Uh, it was, you know, we were given medication and we had to take it. Uh, some people I know were restrained to take uh, because they didn't want their medication. They were restrained and they were forced to take the medication. John Gittinger, recently retired chief psychologist for the CIA. This is the first time Gittinger has been interviewed publicly. You could disable a whole city by putting a very small amount on a water supply. After all of these years of us, uh, uh, those of us who are involved in looking for this secret drug, uh, this was the only thing that began to look for the first time like it might be something like that. Well, the Soviets into LSD. I'm going to have to say uh, I'm sure they were, but if you ask me to prove it, I, I've never seen any direct proof of it. We went into the Mazatec area, far from the highways, remote from Mexico City. There we found that rotten bagasse, as it's called, bagasso, covered with mushrooms. These mushrooms I didn't know, did never, had never seen. They were the sacred mushrooms. To James Moore, a University of Delaware chemist, secretly served the CIA preparing deadly chemicals on short notice. Moore was instructed to get close to Wasson and accompany him on another trip to Mexico to get the magic mushrooms. Internal documents show the CIA felt a drug derived from the mushrooms could remain an agency secret. What in the world were they looking for with the magic mushrooms? I think the best answer to that is that they were looking for fundamental information on compounds that were, would be capable of causing changes in, in behavior, changes in mental attitude, did you ever consider what would have happened if any of these substances were given to, say, unwitting people? Oh, I don't remember having considered that specifically. I... What if you... I, I trust perhaps you've thought about it. Uh... Well, I haven't worried about it. Uh, I... You asked, your question again, what would I have thought had I known that... Uh, the any of these substances were being... Would have been given to unwitting persons. Uh, you mean a, a hostile agent in an, uh, of another government? No, well, I, I mean, that was probably I one mean of the things they had in I mind. mean, testing it out on an American citizen. I... I guess I must seem very, very cold-blooded about this, but I don't recall ever having been very much 
preoccupied with that uh, with that issue. This was what's called a snatch and grab, uh, and you literally don't have even time to think. I mean, literally, as I'm, I was, you know, walking, you know, I guess I was walking east on the north side of the King. I saw the white van ahead. I thought to myself, don't be paranoid, Matthew, it's just a van. And there's a guy walking towards me at equal distance, and he starts cutting towards me, towards the curb. And so I had to go, you know, co closer to the van. And by the time, he did this like two or three times. By the time I'm at the van, I'm within two feet. And then I heard my name being called, Matthew, and I turned. And then time just slowed down because I recognized the profile. Uh, and then the next thing you know, I heard a click. And before I could even turn, that was the van opening, slide, sliding the door. I was holding like a headlock, and at the same time, a rag that was in an inhalant of soap rag was put over my nose and mouth. And I was dragged back into this van. I was unconscious in a matter of like two seconds. Uh, that one was a forced e electroshock event uh, to make me shut up about writing my book. And he even told me just before they did it. You know, you've been a bad boy, Matthew. You've been talking. We warned you. You weren't supposed to talk. And then zap. That was in 2007. And then 2010, there was a, I, I, I decided to post on an online site called Rabble.ca the three post-hypnotic suggestions. Because I thought, well, you know, if I get this out, it'll be good. Uh, but that turned into a real problem. Um, anyway, uh, they didn't abduct me, but they scared the living daylights out of me, which was the whole point. I was pursued by people with guns and stuff. It was very bad. It, it's in the book. In 2014, I had just recovered my life, my career, and everything, and I'd gone through 500 hours of therapy, uh, both uh, from a, a, a public a psychiatrist who's a specialist in treating psychological trauma and PTSD, and then 250 hours with a private therapist, which I paid a lot of money for. Um, and I, my life, my career was back. And, you know, I was I was consulting to a big bank. And I was a team leader and an architect, and, and I was, you know, I felt really good about things. And uh, then I decided that uh, I wanted to know how much they were watching me, and like how how serious, like I was under being monitored. And I, um, I I laid what's called a false trail. Uh, I, I went on my, my web browser and I, I just surfed to the local Russian consulate website and to the hours of operation. Well, that met uh, with a very swift response. Uh, I was then, I have graduated since then to be a tester of chemical uh, and biological uh, weapons, which uh, has been part of MKUltra all along. It's not just mind control. I mean, MKUltra, uh, you know, what's called Monarch, is, is definitely torture, trauma, mind control, but there's also all this biological and chemical weapon testing. So in 2014, on June 21st, um, I was fogged a block from my house walking my dog at 7 in the morning with uh, what's called scopalamine, which is the number one mind control drug. And NASA in 2013 had just developed an aerosol of this drug. So um, at the outset of the show, I meant to mention that in 1945, the CIA Project Paperclip uh, brought in approximately you know, five or 6,000 Nazi scientists, mind control and also rockets. And the mind control ones went to the CIA, the military, academia, etc. research hospitals. That's right, we got them all. Uh, so I, I can only imagine that NASA is just trying to help out when one group of Nazis helping out another group of Nazis because, yeah, I mean, basically the people in the CIA and the military who were doing mind control stuff need this scopolamine aerosol. It's very useful. I have been hit with it, I don't know how many, once, twice, three times, four times, about four or five times now I've been aerosol with it. Once in 2014, they did a scopolamine fog test, which I nearly died. I mean, I was unconscious in seven seconds. My dog tried to revive me by licking my lips and nose because I'd stopped breathing on the grass. And he was injured, severely injured. And uh, the, the x-ray actually is in the book. And he, he later died of his injuries. He got cancer exactly at that point in his, in his ankle where he was slammed hard uh, enough to fracture his bone a little bit. Anyway, um, then I got uh, home invaded in January of 2015. I got home invaded in May of 2015. I got home invaded in October, November of 2015, and each one of these home invasions have involved uh, torture. So first of all, I get I get a spray can version of scopolamine, which, which subdues me completely and it wipes out all your free will. Uh, in fact, just so people know, there's so people don't know this that Dr. Camille Uribe, who is the head of the toxicology unit at San Jose University Hospital, said, "I can give you a gun and tell you to go kill someone, and you will do it." 
So that's what scopolamine is. It wipes your free will completely. Now you combine that with... Now how, how do we know, Matthew, they haven't used you already for something? They have. What was that? What did you do? You there? Boy, he's gone. They got him. Ho, ho, ho. We'll try to get him. Try to get him. He's gone. That has got to be as weird as it comes. We're, we're talking about Project MK Ultra with somebody named Matthew Pauley. He's written a book called The Murder of Time. And uh, I was just ready to go to some calls. I just may do that. And he is just gone off the face of the world. Well, I'll tell you what's so weird about this. Not only is his landline gone, but he's not answering his cell phone, which is going straight to voicemail. 